guys, happy Friday. So for today's Q&A, I wanted to focus on all of the great questions I've been getting from you guys with regards to sunscreens. I think it's appropriate for the upcoming summer months um, and you know, uh, they're, they're very in insightful questions that you all are asking. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea, I'm a dermatologist. I film day in the life of a dermatologist vlogs as well as sit down videos and uh, skincare Q&As that have been going live on Fridays, um, as well as skincare routine videos where I show my kind of daily skincare routine. So I encourage you to stick around if you like this kind of content and uh, yeah with that let's get started. So question number one, why should I wear sunscreen? So ultraviolet light uh, from the sun uh, penetrates the skin and drives inflammation into the skin, destroys the underlying collagen matrix and contributes to photo aging, discoloration, wrinkling, all of those things. But importantly, ultraviolet radiation causes DNA damage in the skin. It triggers inflammatory uh, mediators and damages cells and leads to skin cancers. So sunscreen is an important measure to protect yourself against sun-related skin cancers. Additionally, we have good data that individuals who make a lot of little skin cancers, when they start wearing sunscreen consistently, they have a decreased number of these little sun-related skin cancers. Shouldn't we get some sun exposure for vitamin D, and isn't sun important for vitamin D, and aren't we putting ourselves at risk for vitamin D deficiency? I made a separate uh, video on this topic, and I've addressed it in other Q&As, but I'll mention it again here, in that, Vitamin D is critical for our health. It's critical for the health of our bones as well as the function of our immune system. And while sun does play a role in vitamin D synthesis in the human body, it does not play an exclusive role. Um, and so vitamin D can be obtained from our diet and from supplementation. And we have no data to show that individuals who worship the sun are any less vitamin D deficient than individuals who avoid the sun. We're still refining the definition of a good vitamin D level to begin with. And importantly, we don't know how much sun you would need to actually raise your vitamin D to that level without subsequently increasing your risk of both skin cancers and sun-related damage to the skin. It's the opinion of the American Academy of Dermatology as well as many European societies of dermatology and international consensus opinions on this topic that sun exposure is not an adequate means of obtaining vitamin D and, and people should in fact uh, protect their skin from excessive ultraviolet radiation and sunscreen is is a is one prudent measure uh, of doing so. The next question that I get is, well, I'm black. Do black people need to wear sunscreen? Absolutely. Um, black people and darker skin types can in fact develop sun-related skin cancers and, and sun-related damage to the skin and do in fact require sunscreens. And additionally, darker skin types are intimately aware of the fact that if they have say acne or um, a scratch or a cut, that excessive sun exposure on that healing skin lesion uh, can result in the skin lesion going away with a dark mark that can hang around for a while. And inadequate sun protection of that healing skin site uh, really increases the chances of that. So if you're somebody with darker skin who's dealing with what's called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, you're doing yourself a large disservice by neglecting your sunscreen. Um, and thirdly, if you're suffering from conditions like melasma or dark spots um, and you're trying to treat these conditions and you're not and you're neglecting your sunscreens and your sun protection, you're essentially rendering them useless. Um, so bear that in mind, sun protection is really important, um, otherwise you're taking 10 steps backwards. As sun drives a, a large majority of inflammation in the skin discoloration and most of the cosmetic concerns that you have are exacerbated and worsened by excessive sun exposure. So don't neglect your sunscreens. And I talk a lot about sunscreen on the channel and um, I show myself using sunscreen. I use it in my everyday skincare routine, which I encourage you to check out my morning skincare routine if you've missed it and I get many questions uh, because I frequently refer to chemical sunscreens and physical sunscreens so I get a lot of questions um, asking to clarify the difference. Physical sunscreens contain the ingredients zinc and or titanium dioxide. They physically block ultraviolet light. They're effective when applied onto the surface of the skin immediately in terms of their ability to block ultraviolet light. 
They offer great protection against the two wavelengths against the two wavelengths of ultraviolet light that uh, affect the skin. UVA, which penetrates very deep into the skin and damages collagen and ages the skin, and UVB, which penetrates more into the top layers of the skin and damages the DNA of the skin and predisposes to skin cancers. So zinc and or titanium dioxide exclusive sunscreens offer good protection against both of these wavelengths and are effective immediately. Additionally, these sunscreens also provide a little bit of protection against visible light, uh, the light that we can see with our eyes. And why might this be important, you ask? Well, we now know that visible light also plays a role in driving some of the persistent discoloration associated with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and melasma. So in summary, zinc and or titanium dioxide exclusive sunscreens are a really good choice for good sun protection from the wavelengths UVA and UVB that come from the sun that you cannot see but damage the skin as well as visible light that you can see and likely contributes to persistent dark spots and or melasma. So then what are chemical sunscreens? Well chemical sunscreens contain a variety of filters to filter out the different wavelengths of ultraviolet light. They include things like avabenzone, octocrylin, octisalate, etc. Essentially many ingredients that are not zinc and or titanium dioxide exclusively. And these ingredients are generally quite effective as filters. They um, do degrade with time, therefore it is recommended that chemical sunscreens be replaced every three years. Importantly, when you apply these chemical sunscreens to your face, you need to wait 20 minutes before going outdoors because they actually have to form a film on the surface of your skin to protect from ultraviolet light. Rather than physically blocking ultraviolet light, like the zinc and or titanium dioxide exclusive sunscreens, these sunscreen ingredients actually absorb ultraviolet light and uh, disperse it as energy. They offer pretty reliable protection against UVB and fair fairly reliable protection against UVA. Specifically, the ingredient avabenzone is quite good at filtering out UVA. Um, however, as I mentioned, these ingredients degrade with time um, and their reliability is not as robust as as the zinc and or titanium dioxide exclusive sunscreens. Moreover, they generally do not offer protection against visible light. Um, however, they tend to be cosmetically more appealing in that they blend into the skin a little bit more um, aesthetically. They don't tend to leave that white cast. On the flip side, however, these ingredients uh, many people can find irritating and associate with sensations of burning or stinging. Additionally, you can become allergic to one of the ingredients. They can be less well tolerated. And then the third type of sunscreen that you should be aware of is a combination sunscreen and it will have a combination of zinc and or titanium dioxide as well as some of the chemical filters. The next question that I get is, can I recommend a sunscreen that will not burn or sting around the eyes? The chemical sunscreens that contain the filters like avabenzone, those are the ones that tend to be irritating and associated with burning and stinging around the eyes. Whereas the zinc and or titanium dioxide exclusive sunscreens, the physical sunscreens, tend not to be. And with regards to the eyes, I get a lot of questions about should I be putting sunscreen around my eyes? The answer is yes, you absolutely should. There are sun-related uh, changes around the eyes that occur and skin cancers that occur around the eyes are, are common. Um, so you should be putting sunscreen in those areas and the zinc and or titanium dioxide only sunscreens tend to be the, the most well tolerated. The next question that comes up a lot is um, what are my thoughts on the spray on sunscreens and the powders? Unlike the cream formulations and lotions, Spray formulations and powders cannot ensure a good distribution of the sunscreen ingredients onto your face and are less reliable. So I would not rely on those exclusively. Um, I would come in with a base layer zinc and or titanium dioxide only sunscreen. The next question is where should I be applying sunscreen? You should be applying sunscreen to your entire face, your neck, your upper chest, and your ears. Many people neglect 
like the ears and the neck. Um, but sun related changes on the neck um, end up being a huge cosmetic concern down the road. Um, so go ahead and prevent, go ahead and do your best to prevent that by, by coating your neck. And oftentimes many skin cancers arise on the tips of the ears. Um, so that's an important place to put the sunscreen as well. You should reapply sunscreen every two hours while you're outdoors um, participating in outdoor activities. So say you're outdoors, you know, working in the yard and you've been out there for two hours, you need to take a break and reapply sunscreen. And the follow-up question that I often get is, well, I am inside all day. There aren't that many windows in my office. Um, do I need to uh, reapply sunscreen in that case? Uh, probably not. Uh, if you are sitting in front of a window, Window, then I would recommend reapplying uh, throughout the day. Probably not necessary to do it every two hours, but I would give yourself a reapplication at some point in the day because UVA, the wavelength of light that penetrates deeply into the skin, does in fact come in through the window. So you're not safe just by being indoors. The ultraviolet light can still see your skin. So you need to wear sunscreen every day. You do not need to wear sunscreen at night, however, while you're sleeping. I, that's another question I get. Uh, quite a bit. In terms of the zinc and or titanium dioxide only sunscreens, another question that comes up is, well, um, what percentage of zinc or titanium dioxide should I be looking for and does that ma matter? No, okay, um, that percentage uh, sometimes varies depending on um, the way the cream or lotion was formulated, etc. Um, what you need to look for, uh, brands have to show in order to label their product as a sunscreen. Most countries have standards in place for reporting on sunscreens, but um, with regards to, at least in the US, what I'm most familiar with, you want to look for the terms broad spectrum and that it says that it protects against UVA and UVB. So for example, this product that I have been using and like, the Neutrogena Sheer Zinc Dry Touch, this is exclusively a zinc oxide only sunscreen. This is a physical sunscreen. It's SPF 50 and it's broad spectrum. Okay, that's important that it say that. And it protects against UVA and UVB and it's SPF 50. So this sunscreen is identical to this sunscreen pretty much in terms of protection. Uh, this is also a zinc oxide sunscreen that is broad spectrum SPF 50. They're simply different brands, um, and you may like one over the other as far as the vehicle that they are in, uh, but the sun protection, the, the important part, the health part, is, is standardized, okay? Know that. It is regulated as a, as a drug, essentially, um, versus a cosmetic. Okay, so th this has to go undergo a standardization of testing to demonstrate that. Um, so many of you have asked me about the IT Cosmetic CC Cream with um, SPF in it, and that is a product that I've used in the past and actually really like quite a bit. Um, but uh, you asked me if that's a good one to use, and I love it. Um, but do you know this, that makeups and CC creams are not good enough on their own because chances are you're not going to be re chances are you're not going to be putting your makeup all over your neck and ears and upper chest. Um, and so great as a follow-up layer, but not enough on its own. Um, so I recommend that. Most people don't put enough sunscreen on, we're, we know that for a fact. Um, and so I like to come in with a layer method, almost like you would with painting your nails or painting the walls in your house. You kind of uh, even out streaks and mist areas and skip areas. That's why I come in with first a broad spectrum sunscreen base layer, and then I follow it up with a tinted sunscreen, um, which I encourage you to check out in my skincare routine videos. Mentioned to you all is that sunscreen is an excellent measure um, to help protect the skin against sun-related aging and sun-related skin cancers. However, it is not a free pass to go outdoors tanning uh, and to spend excessive time in the sun. And alone, it is probably not enough either. That's why you will see me wearing broad brimmed hats in my videos, and I encourage you to do the same. You will see me wearing this um, Cooley Bar cardigan that protects the top of my hands. This has universal protective factor 50 embedded in the fabric. Um, I love this. I'll link it down below if you're interested. Um, and so it's not enough to simply rely on sunscreens. You, you know, I encourage you to cover up, protect your skin. 
this particular brand I like because they've got different clothing options um, versus just beachwear and they have options for children which I really like. Pro definitely protect your kids. And so a follow up to that, I get a lot of questions on here about children and sunscreens for children and um, sunscreens are safe for children, um, particularly those that are marketed for babies. I mean you don't have to be a baby to use baby sunscreen but these are great for kids um, and you should uh, definitely feel comfortable putting these on your, your children. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed today's q and I'm going to conclude it here. Um, and uh, let me know what your favorite sunscreens are. I'd be, I'm, you know, I'm always anxious to know that in the comments below. And um, I'd love to uh, share with you guys some of my favorite sunscreens maybe in a sit-down video at some point. So let me know if that's something that you would like to see. Because um, I, I obviously use a lot of sunscreen and try out a lot of different sunscreens. And uh, I know not all of you watch every single one of my vlogs. Uh, so if you want kind of a rundown on, on my favorites and, and least favorites, uh, let me know. Um, but with that, I'm going to conclude this video here. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys in my next Q&A. Bye.